Hi, Tristian. Hi, Andres. How you going? Uh, I'm good, and uh, today I will uh, we will speak about your piece, uh, Rhythm City. Yeah. Um, can you just uh, give shortly a description of what's going on in the piece? Yeah. So uh, Rhythm City was a piece that I composed in 2018, so a few years back now, and it was written for a friend of mine um, and a wonderful pianist by the name of Zubin Kanga, who's an Australian pianist and composer. And um, he works now at um, Royal Holloway in the uh, University of London. So he has um, a role there as a lecturer. And uh, yeah, we've collaborated over the, over the years in various um, ways on different pieces. But this piece was uh, quite a new thing for me. He approached me, he wanted a piece for piano solo and um, sort of a multimedia element, you know, so live set, live electronic sounds, um, visual imagery as well. And, um, and so I, I thought a lot about what I wanted to do in the piece. And basically the, the idea of the piece was to assemble lots of video clips of fairly mundane day-to-day -day activities, short clips, yeah, a number of number of things, you know, like um, chopping vegetables or shutting a door or um, traffic, uh, really sort of quite random, actually. And there was no real sort of planning to those video clips. I basically recorded dozens of these video clips. Um, the idea being I wanted to just assemble a whole bunch of different types of activities or scenes that I could loop and then extract musical inspiration from. And so I guess what I've done in the piece is try to elevate relatively mundane things and sort of explore a musicality in them, you know, a bit of um, musical interest. And so a lot of the video clips are just loops, like short loops, and then rhythms start emerging, and then that's referenced in the piano part. So it's almost like, thinking back, it's a bit like how um, for silent film in the early sort of 1900s, you'd have someone playing the organ and improvising sounds in sync with the visuals or improvising music, sometimes sound effects. And I sort of took that on as a bit of an inspiration as well. It's, it's a bit like a silent film that um, you're playing along with. I mean, there are sounds as well and um, sort of reverb effects and granulation effects on the sounds in the video. But yeah, I see it a bit like a silent film um, uh, exploration or a link to that at least. Um, yeah, and I guess the piano player has, like the piano obviously, but then a MIDI keyboard and on uh, that is resting on top of the piano. And what the pianist is able to do is manipulate the video clips in real time. So you can splice them up, you can change the loop points, you can reverse them, you can... Um, trigger a random flurry of videos if you so choose. So there's lots of sort of interactive, interactive components to it. It's a bit like a video game style experience for the pianist, actually. So there are various moments in the piece where the performer stops playing the piano altogether and just manipulates the, the video clips. Yeah, so in a nutshell, it was kind of an exploration on the mundane, <laughs> you know, just the day-to-day the -day things um, that we, we find ourselves doing and finding a musicality in those things. That was kind of the gist of it. Mm -hmm. And what is mm -hmm. um, um, art? Um, is there some a message? Yeah, what you want to say with that piece to the audience? Um, well, I guess the message is, you know, stop and smell the roses a bit, like enjoy, enjoy the sounds around you, um, take stock of things, um, yeah, just, just listen to the world around you, ultimately. Um, you know, I find I do that a lot, you know, day-to-day -day life. I, you know, I, I carry my phone around with me, of course, like everyone does. And I'm always sampling things, recording sounds, looping it, um, playing with it. Um, so I guess just being in tune with your surroundings and it's like, yeah, enjoying the sonic experience, ultimately. And uh, how you came to, uh, to this uh, title of this? 
Rhythm City. I guess, yeah, I mean, uh, I thought it was a pretty snappy title and I think it sort of, it's quite playful and it, um, it kind of summarises the idea of the piece in a way, which is that, uh, you know, you're, you're in a, you're in a certain setting, in this case, a city, and everything can be playable, like in a video game sense, like all these video clips can be played. It's kind of a gamification of these these sounds. So I see it as a kind of playful piece ultimately, Do you know, and like looking back, actually thinking back, I was inspired by, um, you know, Stefan Prinz wrote a wonderful piece called Piano Hero, you might know of. Do you know that piece? Yes, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, great, great piece. And Zubin has played that piece. And I remember being quite taken aback by it because it was playful and fun, ultimately. You know, it's like a, it was like a kind of video game experience for the performer, I thought, and for the audience, maybe. Um, so I guess that's the title. You know, it's, sort of, it's a, bit of a bit of a nod to that piece in a way, I would say. And, and it was all very, all very new for me, that, that type of approach um ha having that kind of degree of control over the visual component in real time uh was a bit of a risky thing for me because i hadn't done it before uh, but i learned a lot during the process it was a, a great learning curve of course but um it was uh, wonderful to work with zubin on it and yeah and um this uh, uh, rhythm city right and you, as i understand right you you you, you capture like uh, videos and sounds yeah. from real city which yeah. it was it was sydney melbourne or some other city? uh in sydney yeah so basically a lot of it was just little clips from things in my apartment um and then the piece sort of goes beyond that and explores the city in in various ways um so there's basically internal like like sort of um, indoor shots, indoor clips, and there are outdoor clips. And we sort of go between those a little bit. And maybe the musical sense is a little bit different there. Um, but oftentimes, yeah, the, the, the clips are characterized by like really clear driving rhythmic elements. Um, but yeah, they're all they're all recorded in Sydney. Yep. Um, and if I correctly understood, right, then the, uh, the pianist plays both. Um, it plays piano and it plays um uh, this uh, midi uh, keyboard with uh, yeah and with videos right yeah that's right so um the piano uh is set up in such a way that it's like so the music stand is taken off so there's room for the midi keyboard on top and the midi keyboard is just key mapped to certain things in max msp so yeah, you know, there's a certain there's a certain range of the keyboard which triggers discrete video clips. It's like an octave or so, octave and a half. And then there are some keys that play around with the speed of the video, um, the loop itself, like it makes the loop shorter or longer. Um, can reverse the video. There's also like this random feature, which you know, you click, you click, you press a button, you press a, a key, um, and it just creates like a flurry of randomization. In the clip choice clip selection so it's pretty interactive you know you can you can have a lot of fun just playing around with the keyboard part which i sort of did in that video i mentioned i'll, I'll send you a video which gives a, gives you a bit of a demo of what the software does it's a very focused video just on just that there's no sort of uh, accompanying music it's just sort of a demo on the possibilities of that tool so of course you could drop in any video clips you wanted to and play with them um, so yeah, that's what the, the the pianist ultimately has to control the piano and the video sampler elements there, and he has some sliders too, so to change the mix of the, the various elements. Um, and there's also a microphone that's used with a threshold to trigger certain things. So, for instance, if you play a really loud chord, it might trigger a certain clip or certain sequence of clips or something like that. Okay. So it's, it's yeah. And um, what is the uh, drum to do of the piece, right? Yeah, so I guess what happens with the piece is it starts um, with quite a focused shot of <laughs> you're in the kitchen, right? Um, turning on your gas stove and the click of that 
triggers are sort of like it's looped and it creates a kind of rhythmic sort of feature for the opening. And basically what happens is it goes from like very clear rhythmic elements to increasingly chaotic sounds. So noisy sounds, sort of glitchy elements, all that sort of stuff. And so it, that sort of gets established through the first, well, half of the piece, I would say. And then the second half of the piece, it, it suddenly resolves into this sort of big meditation, which is quite tonal, actually. And um, it's basically the sound of like, hitting various kitchen sort of bowls and plates and such. And um, I looped some, some, some of those recordings and it's all in like G minor. You know, so it's, it ends up being this quite big medit quite a big meditation towards the, the end of the piece. So you're getting the really noisy, glitchy stuff that sort of forms and then settles into this big meditation at the end. So that's that's really the sort of arc of the piece, I would say. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you have some intention? What kind of sensorial experiences you, you would like uh, to create for a viewer during? Yeah, I, I guess the big uh, thing I'm trying to get across there is I want it to be like an enjoyable listening experience and quite fun drawing connections between what the pianist is doing and the sounds and actions on screen. So there's a bit of sort of Mickey Mousing involved, a bit like in sort of cartoon music. You know, in cartoon music, you'd have those, those masterful composers uh, back in the day. Um, where everything that happens on screen is synchronized completely in the music. Do you know, like Mickey Mouse runs off screen and it's accompanied by a xylophone bliss or something. Do you know, like it's a it's like mapped right on. And so I'm I'm kind of I was I was curious the humor of this in a way, like how how humorous or how how light can the experience be watching this pianist try to match their actions with the screen, the imagery on the screen. And I think, I think those connections can make for, a, yeah, sort of a, a joyful, like sometimes funny experience, you know, like there's a bit where I'm just cutting vegetables in the kitchen, do you know what I mean? On loop, there's a video of that. And, the pianist is like frantically trying to stay in time with it. You know, so you've got this like really mundane ac action, mon a mundane activity. Um, and there's just like quite complex rhythmic element that's sort of superimposed on top of it. You know, it's just, I, I just thought it was quite an interesting thing to explore in the piece. Mm -hmm. And um, what was the process of composing uh, the piece? How long it took and what kind of stages uh, you went through? Yeah, I mean, um, I guess writing this piece, I had to be composing the, I had to compose the piano part while I was developing the software tools for the electronics uh, because they're so interrelated, you know? And I had to find the right order of clips. So I had so many clips. I had maybe, you know, three, I had like, you know, over 50 clips or something like that. So I had to arrange them in some sort of order that I thought was interesting. Um, and then I just went, went about transcribing rhythmic elements from those clips and writing piano music around that. And, so, so you um, started with visuals, right? In this case. Ultimately, yeah. Like I, I knew I wanted to do that. I knew I wanted to use like looping techniques on video clips and use that as inspiration for the piano music. Um, so yeah, I guess the first task was just transcribing a bunch of these videos, like the, the audio from them and creating these little piano modules or sections. Do you know what I mean? So like one of the videos um, could be a, a plane landing, right? And like trying to like, how would, I rep how would I recreate that in the piano? Like what kind of things would I do? Um, and so I use these kind of cluster sounds and as, as it, as it lands, it sort of slows down a little bit to sort of, I don't know, like there's a sort of sense of gravity as it lands and then it lands and then it slows down. So I try to, like, what would I do with the piano? So that was one little study, you know, I might've spent a day just writing 
music for that particular clip. But then, of course, the problem is how do you link all these materials together in a cohesive way? So that was the next bit, of course. And then, of course, you know, troubleshooting and developing the software to give the pianist that, that control I was talking about before, that all takes time. So I was, I was sort of jumping between things constantly because if I was too much in one area, like if I just worked on the electronics, then I would lose scope of what the sounds of the music would be. So I had to sort of jump between them quite a lot. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, what kind of uh, compositional uh, principles you, you have used in the piece? Compositional principles. Principles. Um, well, I guess repetition is a core one. Um, improvisation as a as a way to generate material. Um, sudden contrasts and, and interjections of material which is something I'm very interested in as a compositional principle. So to summarize that, it's repeat things a few, like a number of times, right? A few times. And then sort of randomly interject with very different material and then come back to the first material again. So this kind of jarring idea or switching between channels, inverted commas, you know what I mean? It's like sort of... Zooming in on different types of material and 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 then quickly shifting somewhere else. So I was very interested in that, and I thought that type of technique and, and approach suited this piece very well because, of course, you know the video clips are always changing, and there's a lot of contrast. So that that would be the main, the main principles, I'd say. And you said that there is some kind of uh, improvisational principle. So so we, so you gave some kind of freedom, right? To to, uh, to, to pianist. Yes, that's right. And I guess improvisation is a, is a is a core thing for me as a composer. Like in the in the first in the uh, very initial moments of writing a piece, I'm improvising to generate material, and so I, I'm hoping that that improvis improvisational spirit continues continues on uh, for a performer. But in the piece itself, I leave things a bit open ended. Like I'll put things in, you know. If you want some specifics, I'll put things in sort of box notation and I'll say something like repeat any number of times or, you know, um, shape the sound in this way, but use these core ideas or manipulate this video clip and be playful with it and just see where it goes. You know, <laughs> so from performance to performance, it might be quite different, of course. There is a lot of detail in the score as well. Like it's, it's all written out, the piano part. Um, but then, you know, I like, as I said, I like to contrast that with very, you know, kind of open-ended moments. And, um, and of course, with a performer, you would discuss the general context and what you're after. But I, I just like having that freedom in a piece. It just, it frees it up. It, it, op it opens up the sound a little bit and the, the, the performer can take some ownership over it as well, which is, which is fun. Yeah. And then. Uh... Did somehow uh, working uh, with uh, pianist did somehow yeah. uh, this cooperation shaped or change as a piece? Yes, um, like there was a lot of to and fro, and um, you know I would, I would sketch some things and he would give me feedback. We got together a few times just to explore the electronics. You know, because I, I was curious, you know, I had a setup at home, obviously, and I was doing it myself and, and sort of playing it. But I wanted his perspective on a bit annoying to play or difficult or not very idiomatic, you know, because we've, we've got to consider, of course, the MIDI keyboard element on top means the music stands somewhere else or the, or the music has to be put somewhere else, just like practical things. You know, a lot of it was just practical. Like, how am I going to get my hands around this? Um, how are we going to set up the the various things required for it? Um, but as far as the notation went and the actual musical material, a lot of that was just sort of notated in a fairly traditional way. I would give it to Zubin. He would send me back some notes and, you know, we refined and uh, we, re we refined it and um, took shape over time. 
And um, right, as I understand, there was special software built right for this video bot. On yeah, that's right. Bot. Did you build it on your own? It... Yes. Yeah, so I mean, most of it, yes. So I did about ninety percent of it, and that was a big learning curve for me because um, I, I had very specific ideas about what I wanted. And I couldn't find anything available, like a commercial tool. I didn't find, I couldn't find anything that, that did specifically what I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, I have some experience in Maximus P and I decided to just give it a whirl. And, you know, I spent quite a few months developing this patch. Um, and of course, you know, when you're sort of compiling different code and you're trying to make it all work, Invariably, there are some some clunky elements to it. You know, there might be some some programming that's not very elegant or whatever. And so, I have a very good friend of uh, here in Sydney who's quite a wizard, Maximus P. And so, I asked him if he wouldn't mind looking over it and helping me clean it up and make it a bit more efficient. You know, in terms of CPU usage, all that sort of stuff. And uh, now it runs really nicely. You know, it's quite a quite a smooth software tool, I think. You know, got it. Mm. And um, and and hardware. What kind of hardware was used? Yeah, hardware. So we had a MIDI keyboard, of course, as I mentioned. You need a laptop yes. to run the soft, a laptop to run the software. Audio interface to um take the audio from the Maximus P patch and, you know, send that to a PA. You also need a monitor for the pianist so they can, um, a monitor as in like a, a speaker so they can hear the sound. Also a mon like a visual monitor, like a little screen for them to see the action in real time, but also a big projector for the audience. Um, what else? A microphone to just pick up some of the sound for the threshold thing I mentioned before, which, you know, if it goes over a certain threshold, it triggers different clips and that sort of stuff. So you need that microphone. You also need, <clears throat> just, you know, some mics to amplify the piano in the space for the PA. So it's, it's not too, not too much, but um, like with any piece like this, it, it, it does create some stress and anxiety <laughs> in setup because, you know, things always go wrong. You know, there's always a component that doesn't quite work or whatever. Um, something's not working for some reason. Uh, but as far as tech setups go, this this wasn't too bad. It was pretty pretty elegant, pretty simple to set up. And can you imagine uh, the same piece, but without uh, visuals, visual part? Yeah, good question. Um, I think so, because... You know, I, I spent a lot of time transcribing these video clips. And so there's a lot of material. And a lot of it I didn't use in the piece, actually. And so I could imagine a version of the piece, which is just a piano solo work. I think it would work quite well, actually. So that's something I might do in the next couple of years. Do you know? Um, I think it'd be a very different piece. I might have to cut the number of repetitions of material because there's that one less thing to engage an audience. You know, if you take the visuals away, it means it's just about the music. And um, I guess that was an interesting thing with this piece, of course, is as soon as you put visuals in a composition, it changes how an audience perceives the music, I think, you know? Uh, because I think visuals will always attract the most attention. I think it's just the, the way we are as human, you know? And um, so I'd be curious to see what it would sound like. I'd, I'd be curious to see what that piece would turn out like if I stripped away the visuals and just had the music. I might have to restructure it. might have to change the, 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 the balance of material and um, it might be a, a shorter piece ultimately. Because I think the piece is about 18 minutes. So it's, it's quite a substantial piece. You know, and, but you got uh, me thinking now. You got me thinking. I might, I might uh, do a solo version. So thanks for the idea. <laughs> and could it be different? 
just uh, can you imagine the piece where is only visuals? The same piece but only visuals. Oh yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think so as well. I think it could make a good installation piece. Like I, I imagined uh, a little while ago, you know, you can have like a little gallery space and you could have multiple maps patches. Like, you know, you can have four maps patches, four MIDI keyboards with different videos and stuff. And people could come in and they could manipulate the video clips in real time, like a, like a real time quartet and it would be projected onto the screens and the sounds as well. I think that could be quite interesting. And I think uh, for us, you know, kids would love to play with it. You know, you could have all sorts of clips. You could put anything in, in there you wanted to. I mean, to make it a really amazing project, and I'd, I'd have to really think about how to implement this, you could, you could make it so that people could take video clips there and then, right? Or upload their own video clips and manipulate them on the keyboards right there, like there and then, which would make the experience always change, ever evolving and always changing and um, personal, do you know? I mean, that's, could be fun. I mean, that the video I, I mentioned where I'm just mucking around with a patch is the sort of thing I could imagine being like a little installation, you know, it could be, it could be pretty cool. So yeah, I could see that working as well. And that could be a, a piece that doesn't really have any start or end point you know, at the piece would be an installation. It'd be a sort of commun a community sort of thing. Um, people could come and go as they please, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, pr from your experience, right, from your experience regarding this piece, uh, mm -hmm. what's the biggest difference? Because you are a composer uh, who not only composes multimedia pieces where it, you, you, you're yeah. using some, some visuals, but you are you have a pieces where you let's say sound only and what is the yeah. biggest difference right uh, what's here from from composing this piece including visuals mm. from from mm. from your experience uh, not working with visuals yeah i think it probably goes to that point i made before that you know as soon as you have visuals in a musical composition it changes the it changes the audience's focus ultimately. Do you know? Like I've, I've worked a lot with live electronic sound. Quite a few pieces now involve live electronic sound. And um, I feel that's different because it that kind of just encases the acoustic sounds in a way or heightens or amplifies they sort of work together. They blend together. Whereas the visuals like are a different experience. Do you know? Like the, the sounds don't necessarily blend with the visuals. Like they match and they can kind of relate. But I think an audience is, and you know, subconsciously you're probably you're always trying to reconcile those two things, the oral domain, the visual domain. And um, I'm, I'm fascinated by it. You know, I've done a fair bit of music for film and I, you know, uh, commercial music for TV ads and stuff back in the day. And I quite enjoyed that, you know, exploring that relationship between sound and um, visuals. Um, yeah, I'd be curious to do more of, of that in the contemporary classical domain, for sure, for sure. And what's um, the biggest... Yeah. What's the biggest mm -hmm. learning points, three learning points, right? What you have learned for you creating this piece? Well, the, the biggest uh, learning point there would be the like building the patch, building the software tool itself was a really big learning curve or steep learning curve. A lot of troubleshooting and a lot of patience required. Do you know? Um, that was really the biggest one. You know, I don't think there were too many other challenges. I mean, apart from writing the piece itself, you know, and as a, you know, going back to the other point again, I guess learning more about how 
experimental music can work with visuals and those visuals don't necessarily have to be experimental in themselves you know the visuals that i chose were as i said like pretty mundane clips everyday things and i was i'm, I'm curious about that you know i might might do more of that sort of stuff you know because i don't want the, i don't want the experience to be super overwhelming for an audience you know like the music is hyper experimental maybe and the the visuals as well you know i thought in this piece you could have something to latch onto with the visuals like familiar things and you've got unfamiliar sounds i thought that could be a cool thing so i i guess i learned a little bit more about how to how to do those things yeah how to marry the two worlds and maybe it's um and last question is what would be your mm. i don't know suggestion right to all other uh, composers uh, who would like to create uh, their own multimedia pieces yes well i, I guess ultimately you need a, a concept the danger when working with multimedia i think is that the elements aren't cohesive or they don't work together or indeed you write a piece and then you find video for it and it might not it might not match so i think you've got to you've got to build all the elements together in a really cohesive way from the ground up from the very beginning that would be my my main bit of sort of advice you know and the other one would be jumping between the various elements quite quite often you know so you're not you're not spending too much time just with the music but you know you, you're jumping between the music and exploring the visual, visual elements um of course you can outsource these elements you know you could you could collaborate with a video maker but of course when you're collaborating you're in constant contact and you're discussing ideas you've got the concept down you're not very rarely i think you'd be writing a piece of music and then trying to find someone to fit a video to it I mean, you could but i'd argue it would never be quite as successful um as working together with someone very early on and and making sure that it uh it was a perfect marriage of those those elements you know thank you very much tristan for our conversation thanks andres appreciate it